Hello! So this is an example of what I was talking about. You'd think that this is a nice stage and a sky dome, but in actuality, if we move the camera anywhere else, it is revealed it is actually just a picture that I put on a flat plane to use as a background. So I'm going to be teaching you how to do that yourself with PMX Editor and a photo, and you literally do not need any other program. It's fantastic. So what we're going to do is open PMX Editor. I'll give you a link, don't worry. And we are going to, in the big menu, go to Edit, Primitive View, or Control-P. And from here, it will default to text, but we want a plane, which is a flat 2D thing, like a piece of paper. Width and height, you can put whatever numbers you want, because you can resize it to whatever you like. But if you want a rectangle, you want to do a 1 to 2 ratio. So I'm going to say for height, I want it 5 units tall, and then for width, I want it 10. You can type in here as well. I just used the arrows because it was faster. Now you need you need something in the divisions for it to actually appear. This will control how many columns of vertices and how many rows of vertices there are. It really doesn't make a difference unless you're going to be warping, like folding the, the plane or whatever. For like boxes and the rest of these, it's useful. But for a plane, it really doesn't matter. So I'm just going to default it to two. Now I'm going to turn edge off because... This way, you won't have to worry about turning an edge line off later. You want to leave the rest of these alone. Unless, of course, you want to change the mesh name. I'm going to name it to Background. And then we click Add. And as you can see, something has appeared here. It's hard to tell what because it's white at the moment. So what I like to do is click anywhere to get rid of that. Turn on the green particles, and you can kind of see the corners. What really helps here until we add the texture is clicking mode and going to wire. This turns on the wireframe. Now you can see how big it is and that it is only one sided. That's fine because we don't really need it to have a back. Let's get rid of the primitive menu and open up move because this is how we're going to scale it. I'm going to click and drag and select it all. I don't need the bone, so I don't have bones selected. Drag that and hold and click and hold on scale. And then you just move. As you can see, it goes rather fast. So if you hold control on your keyboard, you can slow it down. I haven't changed my mouse speed, that's just holding control. Shift, on the other hand, speeds it up. So as you can see, I made it way too huge. So we are going to hold control and make it about that size. I think that's pretty decent. We'll be able to adjust it later. So I'm going to select bone so I can grab the center bone. You want to keep it in the center, but obviously I want this above the grid. And drag it up and let go. All right, now we add our texture. I am going to take a moment to save it in the same folder as the texture to make it easier. We're going to name that demo. Now, I already have a texture available in the folder, so I'm going to type that in. This is the, a different texture that I had planned to use for the project you saw. There we go! Now, let's unclick bone, and I'm going to unclick this to make it go away, and unclick the green so I don't automatically see that. And if we turn off wireframe, go back to N, there you go, that's a nice looking background. I'm going to Control S or File Save to save that. And if we click T up here to open Transform View, we can zoom out, grab the bone, and you see that it does nothing because it created a new bone. It already gave us one bone and it created a new bone. The new bone moves it around. So I'm just going to delete this one. Let's go look at bones. There we go. That is not our object. So we click, we hit delete. This is our object. You can name it whatever you want. It helps to have something in the English name. So I'm just going to call it background again. There we go. So let's open up transform view again. 
as you can see, it selected the bone. There we go. This allows you to pose the background wherever you need it in your scene. As long as you use the right camera angle, you can create the illusion of having an actual sky dome or a larger stage or whatever you need it for. For example, this could be used for a title screen, a loading screen, anything you need. But the biggest benefit is that we're not done yet. We're going to add a very simple feature because what if you load this in and realize it's the wrong size? Now you have to go back into PMX Editor and scale it again and hope you get it right? No, there's a much easier method. In the smaller menu, we go to Morph. These are facial sliders, but they can be used for a lot of things. You want to right click, say New, Vertex. This will open a menu to create a new facial slider, and we're going to use some size sliders. So scroll your mouse wheel to zoom out. I hold shift to make it go faster. The left side here is the side you're going to be working with. The right side will show you your results after you click reflect. So I'm going to highlight the entire thing, open up the move menu again for transform view, and I'm going to create a slider for making it huge because you never know how big you might need it. There we go. Frankly, I think that's a rather absurd size compared to the grid, but better safe than sorry. This will allow you to scale it anywhere between the size we had it and this new one. So if I close move and click reflect and then drag the slider, this one will show the result. There you go. So this is a facial slider. Now you can scale it anywhere between. Now, we don't want it in the eyebrows section. So for panel, we click it and choose other. Now be sure to name it something. I'm going to name that big. We click create. Yes. Yes, we are sure, PMX editor. Thank you. And now we click cancel. Are you sure you want to quit? Yes, we've already saved the morph. There it is. Now do note, it only names it in Japanese. You will have to click the English button and input the name yourself. Now I'm going to save it again. But what if you realize you might need it actually smaller than this? Well, we can do the same thing. Just make a new facial, zoom out again, grab it, and shrink it. There we go. That's rather tiny. Let's name that small. Other, reflect to test it. Yep, looks right to me. So let's create our facial. There we go. Rename it in the English box. And there we have it. So now I've saved that. Now when making those facials, you only want to select it and scale it. You don't want to move it because it really helps to have the bone in the center at all times. But that should be it for the project. So let's see how that works in MMD. Load. There it is. Let's load our background. There we go. Ignore that, sorry. And I can make it bigger or smaller. And with this bone, I can move it wherever I need it to be. So, if we load, let's say a default model. Here we go. Oh, I forgot to turn off physics. There we go. Hi, Miku. She loads in the same spot as the background. So let's back that up a bit. Go to the camera. Turn off the axis. Turn off the ground shadow, and with the right camera angle, there you have it. Looks like she's standing in front of the window to the underwater city. As long as your camera is stationary, this works great for videos where you don't move the camera or still pictures. And if I want her at this angle, let's register the camera there. 
all you have to do is to go back to the model, make sure you've got the background selected, and adjust it as needed. Now I want it pulled back, but now it's too small. And that is why we made the facials. There we go. And that is how you can make a texture on a flat plane to use as a makeshift background for whatever you need. If you happen to have the right editing software, you can make this a solid green square and have your own green screen. I hope this was helpful. If you have any questions, let me know.